What is going on, you guys? I've got a super interesting video for you guys today. It's a little different than usual, and if you follow the channel, you know that we normally post on Sundays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, so this is going to be going up on a Monday, and it's going to be a bonus video for you this week. I didn't want to replace one of our normal uploads with this one because it's very different than what we usually do, but it was too cool not to share. So a couple weeks ago, somebody on Instagram sent me a message and said, hey, you should check out the latest episode of this podcast. It's hosted by two fairly famous actors, and they actually gave you in the channel a shout out in the first minute or two of their latest episode. So I clicked on the link and the podcast was called Old Dogs Podcast and it's hosted by MC Ganey and J. Michael Arnaldi. And I didn't recognize those names offhand and you may not either, but I did recognize some of the characters that they played in famous movies and TV shows. J. Michael Arnaldi has played one of the kids in E.T. He's played one of the kids in A Christmas Story and M.C. Ganey has played in some pretty famous movies like Con Air, one of my favorite movies growing up. He's played in Django Unchained. He's been in the TV show Lost. Like These are fairly well-known people and here they are talking about our YouTube channel and their podcast. So I commented on the video. I was like, hey, thank you. I'm honored. Thanks for the shout out. You know, this, is, this is pretty wild. And then like one or two days later, their agent emailed me and invited me to come on the show as a, as a guest. So this is the recording of that podcast with J. Michael Arnaldi and MC Ganey. I just want to share it with you guys. People of Earth, we have a special treat for you today. Not just some down on his luck actor or has been or anything like me and Mike, but we actually have a, a man of, the, of our culture, a man that we can learn stuff from. We got Harry Tornado himself, Josh. Josh, no, how no, are you? No, 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 it's Harry Tomato. I watched the video. He has a shirt that says Harry Tomato. What's with the Harry Tomato? Your hair's not red anymore. It, so the official name is Harry Tornado. It was my old Xbox Live gamer tag. And I just, when I made the YouTube channel, I was like, whatever. You know, I wasn't even doing reselling at the time. And we'll get into that later. But the name stuck. I think it's a good name. People remember it. Uh, occasionally, I had some people say it was Harry T Tomato. So I just went off on that, made some t-shirts made some money with with the fake name and it worked out okay now you got to tell me josh uh, uh where are you on the planet? i'm in south south carolina <laughs> i'm sorry what i'm in i'm in south carolina where in south carolina uh columbia columbia lexington right in the middle of the state okay yeah i know it I, i've shot a couple of pictures in south carolina mostly in rock hill yeah rocket yeah that it's oh, nice up there uh, in that area well uh it's a welcome to uh, hollywood i said we're not in hollywood we're in studio city uh, <laughs> uh, it's great to really great to meet you man i have mad great respect, to meet you guys mad respect for your skills dude seriously i mean meta wise just having in this business and making this work for you but the knowledge you have about anything from sneakers to golf clubs to yo-yos, to motorcycles, whatever this, you have this all-encompassing no knowledge that's amazing to me. I don't know I what anything that. is worth. I, I have no idea what anything is worth. Like you take this hat right here. What, 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 do, you, what do you say, Josh? Huh? I, I, you I, got, I got to see the brand. I got to see the brand, the condition. <laughs> you know what? That doesn't even have a brand. Oh, well, yeah, Eddie Bauer. Oh, Look at there. That's, uh -huh. probably, that's probably like a $25 hat, 25 to 30, used. But because it's your hat, it's probably worth Before 25. the show's over, maybe we can get that price up. <laughs> oh, man, it really is a pleasure. Because, uh, you, you know, anybody that can make money and have fun at the same time doing what they want to do it has already beaten the game. That's what we actors think. Hey, you know, I'm sleeping late every day. No two days are ever the same. I yeah. get to hang out with people and talk to who I want to talk to and not talk to other people and come home. With a, I just described my job and yours. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. The only difference is YouTube is is the it's it's I've seen a lot of actors get into YouTube because they finally have control over the whole creative process. Um, you know Christy Carlson Romano, she played Ren on Even Stevens. Yeah, yeah, sure. She's she's a got a huge YouTube channel now, and all of her videos are just her talking about her past life as an actress. And it's really, really interesting content. And she finally has She's talked to her. She's like, this is way better than being an actress because I can control everything. You know, you have your own camera and your own production. You make a lot of money. She's saying that she's making more money with YouTube than she was as an actress, you know? She wasn't a good actress, though. Oh, come on, <laughs> she was, man. She was oh, pretty good. God. Yeah, that's so cool. Good. All right, now, I want to just technically, because I'm looking at you and talking to you. Does that seem strange? Should I be looking up here and talking to you in this camera? Is this No, it, you it, when you look down, it's it's I'm looking right at your eyeballs. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, I'm going to look up here. I'm going to talk to you up here. So I'll go back and forth here. All right. So okay. Mike's, got, Mike's got some, he's well, going to grill you. He's got some questions here. We have here. people that ask questions for you. I, I love it. I love answering questions. I've got to ask. All right. 
So you do a lot of videos helping people learn how to sell and learn how to like buy and sell and all this stuff. But are you afraid that you're making more competition for yourself? Because we're thinking about getting in the business just to go up against you because I think we're better than you. I, I just say, I <laughs> think we can BS this better than you. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, that, that's, that's definitely a, a genuine concern. Um, when, when I first started, um, you know, I was like, do I really want to tell everybody, you know, the secrets of the trade? But honestly, it's one of those things that, you know, 100 people may be interested and start it for themselves. And then 60 or 70 will just quit within the first month because they realize, oh, it's not as easy as it looks. on yeah, YouTube. No. Yeah. And then, you know, a couple more will keep going and then they'll get their first return or something will go wrong. They realize they have to actually pay taxes on all this money they make. Wow. And then they drop out after a year. So, I mean, we've been doing it for about three years now. And there's probably locally, there's probably four or five people that have found my channel and become competitors. But honestly, there's so many different items out there. And there's so much junk in the United States. We live in such a wasteful society. People are throwing money out the door every single day. So it's it's not hard, at least where I am to find profitable items, even with yeah, and you can never tell. I saw a story on the Today Show, I think it was this morning, some guy found a picture, a drawing at a flea market. And it turns out it was done in 1503 by some famous painter. And it's worth yeah. $50 million. But what got me about it was he didn't say, oh, I'll buy this because I like the frame for $12 and go cash it in. He told the guy who had it and said, I'll mm -hmm. split it with you. And they're splitting the $50 million. Would you split? That's very generous of you. Ten dollars with you, <laughs> my brother here. Yeah, yeah. We have a soda. I didn't give him any of the cup. This is mine. <laughs> if you want a soda, he can go to the store himself. Oh man! Well, it's amazing to see you do that thing because I would see this. I'd be looking at this box of things, and I would be like, "Oh my god! I don't know which ones are good. I don't know which ones aren't good. I've touched, but you have this skill set that is amazing to me." I, I, I got I one think question, because you know our acting from what we've done. Which one of our movies is going to sell better online, the DVDs? <laughs> I, so I, I'll tell you what, I, I was slightly Conair, starstruck, because when I was a kid, I, I was born in 1990. So one of the first, like, big box office, like, violent movies I watched was Con Air. And I'm like, that guy from Con like, I've seen Con Air, like, 15 times. And so yeah. I was a little starstruck. So yeah. I, I think that's... I don't think there's a bigger movie than Con Air in terms of what you guys have done. I mean, E.T. was good. E.T. was a little, little to the film. Bank with you country bears. No, not country bears. Uh, bad news bears. Okay. Bad news bears. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate that. <laughs> you were born in 90 and you saw Con Air, but not when it was new, not when you were seven years old, I hope. I, I was pretty young. I, like, <laughs> I remember it being, it was, we didn't see it in theaters or anything, but I remember being on like USA or some TV yeah. network all the time. They still play it all the time because it's such a good movie. It is. It's a very entertaining movie. It's uh, one of my favorites because it's one of the few, few movies when I didn't actually kill anybody <laughs> or, <laughs> or get killed, you know, which for me, that makes it a family picture. Yeah. Yeah. I used to say it is a family picture if, if you live next door to the Manson family. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, Mike, fire off. You I got questions. Mike, that's better. Okay, this is one question we're being asked a lot. What are the best apps that, if someone's going to become a seller, what apps do they need to get to find out the seller comps from barcodes? Seller comps, stuff? yeah. So the only thing we use, uh, if we sell on Amazon, it gets a little more complicated, but we don't do much on Amazon. It's mostly eBay. eBay, you just find your item. You just open the app and search for whatever item you want. eBay or um, Eddie Bauer hat. And then you can see how many are currently listed. There's probably you know 5,000 currently for sale. And then you filter those search results to show what has actually sold in the last 90 days. And that'll tell you what the sell-through rate is. So if you see something that has you know 5,000 currently listed and there's only 50 of them that have sold in the last 90 days, that's probably not a very good item. There's not many, there's a ton available in the market and there's only 50 that have sold in the last 90 days. So you want to look for those items where there's none available and a thousand sold. You know, that's a hot item. You could, you know, auction that and, you know, sky's the limit. Um, oh, well, typically, we I, like to look I, for at least... I have least... one thing that I, that I want to sell in the world and I don't really... I'm not going to be sold. Uh, and I'm not, you're Jeez. not, you believe me. Yeah, you can't be given away. You'd be in the big <laughs> box at Goodwill, okay? Uh, but uh, I have a, a, a watch I bought when I was in the Army. It's a 1969 Omega Seamaster. And uh, <laughs> I've been told that these vintage watches are very collectible. But yeah. uh, where, where should I look other than just Googling it? Is there some place in particular I should look to see what I can get for it? 
eBay is probably going to be your best marketplace for, for watches. Um, okay. you know, the, the, I don't know. There's different mark marketplaces for like sneakers. Um, like some marketplaces only sell sneakers, but for watches, I think eBay is going to be your best bet. It's going to have the biggest audience and the biggest chance of, of getting a top dollar for it. I saw somebody on your, on your show last night had, had a picture of a, a BMW. I used to have an old R 69 S BMW that looked like the one that was on there. I don't know. Did you see it? The white one? I, no, I didn't. I didn't see that somebody, one. Somebody just put it up on there because you sell stuff. They put up stuff they they bought and sold. I guess. I yeah. Guess it was. Anyway, so you know about everything from motorcycles. Now, suppose you see something, and you go, "Wow, I don't even know what that is." What was the last time you saw an object and you went, "I don't even know what it is." How am I going to sell it if I don't even know what it is? Sneakers. So, so you feel. That's that's the beauty of reselling because I don't have to know what something is. I'll just you you can I find like weird electronics all the time. I just look at the brand and model number, type that into eBay, and it's like, oh, this is a, a column respirator or something. I'm like, I, as long as it's not like some weird medical device, just list it. You can look at the model number, see what it's selling for, list it. I mean, I've sold a lot of stuff not well, knowing exactly what it is theoretically you could be selling uh top secret uh, government uh, hardware that somehow got lost and they, the fbi would be coming to your door excuse me josh how much you want for that exactly exactly <laughs> you're just selling you don't care what it is no nope. that's the, that's the game I, I love i love your game man it's good okay here's the question people ask as now you guys call yourself pickers right pickers. Pickers or resellers, whatever you, whatever you want to call me. Okay, this person said, "Do you, we'll call you Harry Tomato." No, just kidding. <laughs> uh, do you think pickers should all have YouTube videos to help their sales? Like show them getting, like if say a guy's buying at the flea markets or whatever, should he be videotaping it or should he not? Like, I, I've always said. I wouldn't recommend doing YouTube for the money, uh, whether it come from views or from viewer sales. Um, we, we do get a lot of viewer sales, but I think we've built our brand over the last three years to be like a family friendly thing. And people just like us and want to support us. Um, and that, that comes from like providing good information and providing, you know, helpful tips that people want to reciprocate, you know? Um, so we do get a lot of viewer sales, maybe 20 to 30% of our total sales come from viewers, but that's probably the highest amount of viewer sales from any other reseller on YouTube. Like most resellers aren't making, they might sell one or two things to viewers every so often, but it's not something that I would, um, I would factor in if you want to do YouTube. Like if you want to do YouTube, just do it kind of like a video diary thing. Yeah. And then if it takes off, it, it takes off, you know, but if you just want to be a picker, if you just want to get out there and get in the game and find something and sell it and, and move and move the material, then you don't need the, the video and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I and mean, most of the, like, if you look at the top sellers on eBay, like their guys, they've got warehouses and 50 employees and they're not worried about making YouTube videos. Um, personally, I think that's a boring life to live. Yeah, that's, yeah, uh, yeah I no, I, I, wouldn't wanna, I wouldn't. I wouldn't watch that for five minutes. You, yeah. I would watch. I would watch you searching through a bin full of anything, man, because uh, you you have a charisma to you. But I uh, yeah, a that. warehouse full of stuff, though that that, that would that wouldn't get me. No. Well, I mean, yeah. it got to. I found you. I I do this thing called Jaspies where they break baseball cards online. And yeah. we literally started selling on Mercari because of your channel. And our first day we did like, we listed a hundred items, sold 10, made a couple yeah. hundred back. I just said, oh, let's see what happens. But I noticed you guys have the captain's autograph uh, from the boat show. Um, oh, yeah. Cap Captain Lee? No, uh, oh. the boat. Captain they, Andy and Captain uh, oh, somebody else from the, the Time that. Bandit. Oh. Yeah, so we do a thing where we sell our autographs online for fans. Mm -hmm. Fans can buy us through this site. Yeah. yeah. And I'm just wondering, what do you think our autographs are worth? Who's worth more? You already said his video is worth more. Why has it got to be you version? Why, why, we, we got a genius here. Yeah, I mean, us or him? Is his autograph worth more than ours? Because he's got a better career right now than we Oh, have. yeah. Yeah. Who's <laughs> deal, are you dealing your own autographs? <laughs> We we autograph? do we do get I mean we don't sell our autographs but we do get asked to autograph items. Should we start selling our autographs? The king of resale, the king picker, just looked at me and said, "Oh, we don't sell autographs." Yeah, we're you're too good. You low lives, you're selling your, your signature. That's what we do, man. You know what I'm saying? Got to eat. Uh, you got to eat. Business, but that's what we do. But uh, but you're not though. If somebody said, uh, uh, "How much does it cost me to get your autograph?" You'd say, "Give uh, here's a, send it to you free, right?" 
Yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, Sometimes like we do stuff for like charity, like we'll sign something and auction off for charity or something like that. But well, I don't think we we're not to the celebrity status like you are uh, yet. No, uh, I'm, so. I may be a celebrity. Mike's at, Mike is actually, I think, technically a charity. I mean, it's I give you actually hold it up. He's, he qualifies as a charity. But if you, I'm on a current TV show right now. What? It's not on this week, is it? Though we won three Emmys in a row. History, history. I was on Lost. How many did Lost win? A dozen. This year we. Won That's pretty Emmy. good. I'm just saying, our show won an Emmy this year. So, Lost was. I think everybody oh, lost. You're wasting, we're wasting valuable time here. <laughs> uh, we, we can settle all this okay. later. So we do this website, the Fan Mail Direct. Should we start doing that online on Mercari? Do you think that would be allowed? Like, So like MC, what we do is people can buy the autographs and we personalize it. Not just mine, but almost anybody. Yeah, there's a ton of celebrities on there. Yeah. And like should the company it's real celebrities real celebrities <laughs> carol <laughs> burnett you know what i'm saying carol burnett Bob Newhart yeah. and stuff like that should it be on mercari or should it just be on like the fanmaildirect.com or where should it should it... so so anytime you get on another selling platform like mercari or ebay you're basically paying to use their platform and their payment processing and their audience so like you're if you sell on your own website you're limited to people that are googling for you know whatever whoever's autograph whereas on ebay or mercari people could accidentally find it so i think but you, you probably sell a lot people more who are googling him in one room one, one small room it would not be a big they're uh, actually in this room <laughs> <laughs> two of us are you know, googling you man okay well uh justin now so your wife also participates in the business i'm told she takes care of the shipping because that would be the big one right and there. she out buys them sometimes Oh, oh, really? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She's been she's been doing pretty much everything. We, we've been trying to do three YouTube videos a week and we don't have any other employees or anything. So that keeps me pretty busy. And so she's been doing the listing. I help with shipping. We go to the post office together, but she's really kicked it in gear. She uh, she left her. She had a pretty good job. She was working with the county. She was director of the wastewater lab for the entire county and left that. You know, we we had some savings and we talked and prayed about it a long time. But um. It's no looking back. She is full throttle and just really been killing it the last couple of months. That's a beautiful, that's a beautiful thing. And, and and somebody else can worry about the wastewater, right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> yep. right. We just had this question come in from our video guy. Who's too embarrassed to be seen on camera, but I understand you haven't. Who's your favorite reseller on YouTube? That's a very good question. Um, so yourself. Yourself. So, so I think. I'm going to separate, I'm going to have two answers, one for who I think is the best reseller and then one for who I enjoy watching the most. Um, I think the best reseller is probably going to be my friend, Matt. He goes by part-time pickers. Uh, he's in California and reselling in California is tough because you got high cost of living. Your thrift stores are expensive. There's a ton of resellers, ton of competition, and it's tough to make enough money with reselling to afford the cost of living. You know, you get, it's the worst of both situations. Yeah. Um, I don't, he's not a full-time reseller, but he's just very good. He really knows what he's doing. Um, I've learned a, a ton of stuff from watching his channel. Um, and then in terms of who I enjoy watching the most, that would be my friend, Caleb. He goes by the, uh, Phoenix resale. Now uh, he lives in Kentucky, which is a great place to resale. And he does mainly video games, but his channel is just, he really cares about the quality of his videos. Um, and it's just, it's really, it's really entertaining to watch when you're a reseller. And everybody's making the same videos. You know, everybody's going to garage sales and flea markets and stuff like that. It kind of gets boring after a while if you're not learning anything. So I don't really watch to learn anymore because I feel like I'm pretty pretty seasoned. I might learn things occasionally, um, but I, I like I like to be entertained. You know, while we're listing or shipping yeah. or something like that. And uh, Phoenix Resale really really does that for me personally. Well, you know, the, the the thing about it is the dynamic is you make it more interesting by what you choose to to pick out of the box. You know, you yeah. pick up some old dirty sock and somebody says, I'll give you $2 for it. I'm in. I can watch that all day long, you know. Yeah. So it's it, the selection process and the way you negotiate and deal with people is what I find really fascinating about And it. you give people giving you golf clubs like Yeah. Day. People say, golf you're such a nice free. guy. Yeah. These golf yeah, clubs. I don't want to clean them. Take them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we that's what we get at the flea market all the time. Like we're we're willing to to ship and and list the big bulky items or things that are a little tougher to 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 sell. Um, you know, people are willing to let those things go for super cheap or even free just because they don't want to deal with them. They don't have the space. So we're able to get some really good deals sometimes on those more annoying to deal with items. 
Well, I'm sort of a new viewer to all of this, certainly compared to the people that are watching you right now. But uh, I want to know is you seem to negotiate very quickly and very straightforward in a fashion. And I haven't seen you have any angry uh, uh, negotiations or get mad and throw something down or anything. Uh, do, are you willing to pay because you know you're going to be able to improve on this or do you, do you have a thing where you say, no, that's unconscionable. Don't ask me for $6 for, uh, for that. You know? yeah. you ever, you ever you know, it's, it's really interesting. Uh, if you guys watch other, other resellers channels, and especially if you see resellers on TikTok or, or anything like that, there's like a whole group of people that just really don't like resellers. They think we're all just like scamming vendors. I'll pay what people are asking. Like, oh, you want $5? Here's $5. People are like, I can't believe you didn't pay her 50 if you knew they were worth a hundred. I'm like, it's not my job to like go around and educate people on how much their exactly. stuff is worth. I'll just pay what you're asking, you know? Um, and sometimes I'll even pay extra. Like I'll pay an extra 10 bucks and people are like, well, you really should have paid an extra 20 because you're still going to make, I don't know. They get mad when you make too much profit off of people. So really? I, I try not to negotiate too they, much because we've got. I hope you the tell YouTube. them they should get up at six o'clock in the morning yeah. and schlep all the way out and get in line and do all the things you have to do to be standing there looking through that box while they're still yeah. at home asleep. And now they're going to lay back and watch on TV and say, "Oh no, you shouldn't have done." That's ridiculous. Yeah. Oh, we had a it's guy. the whole it's the whole mentality like tax the rich and blah blah blah. You know, once 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 you make a certain level of money, people think you should be capped. I'm like, I'm a I'm a huge huge fan of capitalism. I'm a huge fan of the free market. And I just love it, man. If you're willing to put in the work and, you know, find the deals, educate yourself. You, you were saying earlier that I have like a good knowledge of this stuff. It's not, um, I do think a little bit of it is like people are born to be an entrepreneur or born with like a certain eye for I things. There, that but, is a thing. Yeah. Yeah. But I think 90% of what I know has come from experience, either buying things that I thought were good and then learning that they weren't or passing things on videos that I thought were junk. And then hearing 50 people in the comments say, I can't believe you passed that thing. That was $400, yeah, yeah. you know? See, that's what I wanted to say. I, I wanted to tell you that if, that if I'm going to invite myself to come and look in on you next time I'm on that side of the country, because I really would like to meet you, but I really want to go. I really want to go to your house. No, because this is my fantasy. Okay. You keep your fantasy yourself because <laughs> I want to see, I want to see what room you have. Where's all the stuff you couldn't sell. What did that, what do you do? You went out, you bought it. You got to be back at nobody bought it. It's got to be in a big room somewhere. I want to get yeah. pick through there, man. Well, I want to pick and see what you couldn't unload, man. I know it. We we try not to have too much stuff. Like once we, I kind of reevaluate things. We let things sit in our, we have a, a single car garage with like a little nook in the back and it's, it's perfect for like the listed stuff, but we'll buy stuff and then I'll let it sit for a few days. And then when we go to list it, we kind of look at it again, like, okay, with a fresh set of eyes now, like outside of the excitement of buying it in the moment, is this really worth our time? And if it's not worth our time in that moment, it's certainly not going to get any more enticing as time goes on. So right. sometimes we'll immediately redonate stuff or if it's complete junk, we'll just throw it away. Um, but most of the time, once we take the take the photos and actually list it for sale on eBay, I'll, I'll leave it up for a year, you know, give it a year to sell. Because if something hasn't sold in a year, it's probably not going to sell ever. So once we'll, we'll do inventory next week for the end of the how, year. I have an idea. How about a, how about a spectacular once a year show when you go, you bring it all out and it's like the last chance. Yeah. Last chance, look, last chance at this broken golf club once owned by uh, Mickey Muldoon. And, okay, no, and then like throw it over your shoulder into a box. I love it. You know yeah, what? I, what absolutely. I love, man, is that we, the fact that you have excitement when you say in the moment, the excitement, the moment of buying that pair of thirty-year-old sneakers. I mean, it's one thing if you see them, you go, "These are Jordans," it's, but so you're buying Converse and stuff. The thrill yeah. of buying that pair of Converse. Uh, that you have that thrill is a great gift, man. I envy you that because I, my, yeah. I work with Mike all the time. And believe me, the thrill is long gone <laughs> on this pair of sneakers. They wrote really. a song about us. <laughs> The thrill is gone. <laughs> the thrill is gone, man. <laughs> so I, I really love it that you have that thrill in the moment. You got to go back and look at it. And sometimes you must look at it and say, what was I thinking? What yeah. was I thinking? You, usually it happens when we're like on a buying spree. Like we're at the flea market and it's like booth after booth is just money. Like cash is flowing. Once you get the cash flow and it's easy to keep it flowing. Yeah. So I don't know. And, and also I factor in like I'm already here at the flea market. So if I leave empty handed, it's kind of a waste of money. So I, I buy this thing, make 10 bucks in profit and at least make oh, a little bit of money. 
do I understand? I used to live in Ventura, California, and every Wednesday they had a big flea market in the parking lot, uh, this big uh, public parking lot. And yeah. I would always go out there. I know one of the great things was everybody brought their dogs out. So they're all shopping and they all have their dogs. So it's a little bit of a dog show. But man, I would get there and I've, I'm going to go home with something because I want to support this notion, this community. <laughs> the next yeah. thing I know, fortunately, I had a Jeep. So my Jeep was loaded <laughs> and it was all great. My house is filled with all kinds of bizarre, beautiful things until you have to move and that's yeah. when we, that's when i get that feeling of all oh, the the thrill is off this bird cage that's painted 19 different colors and has a stuffed chimpanzee inside what was i thinking now i'm not trying to sell this now so don't, don't get excited but a bird cage with a stuffed chimp inside you'd go there wouldn't you yeah absolutely you should, <laughs> you should have an estate sale estate sales are great because you don't have to do any work you just hire the company let them take a little bit of the profit they yeah price everything they look everything up they have the sale you just leave go on a little three-day vacation come back your house is cleaned out and you got a nice little check you know that actually the irs will do that for you if you don't pay over two or three years <laughs> they will free estate sale services they will, they'll do that for you okay i got quite i know you use the barcode to scan and see what stuff is worth have you ever gone to like a store like i don't know if you have them out there but they're called ross yeah, have you ever gone through Ross because it's all like new stuff that's being reduced price. Have you ever gone through and tried to buy stuff there? The reason, yeah, I've I've tried multiple times. I've only been successful like twice. Um, usually, I don't know. We just really like the thrift store margins. Like when we buy something for a dollar and sell it for thirty. When you go to Ross, you're going to buy stuff for thirty that you can sell for fifty to sixty. You know, so you can still make good money. Um, but one time I went and found a bunch of uh, Nike golf cleats. There was like. I had like 10 or 11 pairs and they were $29 a piece. I looked them up new. and it looked like, yeah, brand new. Yeah. Everything's brand new. It's just like a, it's like a discount. I don't know what, it, I don't know where they get the stuff from, but I bought two pairs uh, for 60, 60 bucks. And I was like, I think these are going to sell for like 80 to 90, but I don't want, I didn't want to spend, you know, 300, 400 bucks on this stuff. Cause I didn't want to invest that much capital. So I bought two pairs for 60 bucks. I sold them the next day, I paid full price, like $89 plus shipping. And I went back to Ross the day after that to get the rest of them. And of course they were, they were sold. So it's pretty competitive, but uh, I mean, occasionally you can find some really good stuff. You know, I've seen people on, I follow a lot of Instagram pages that do Ross and Marshalls and TJ Maxx. Um, and people will find, you know, Vapor Max Nike shoes for 40 bucks and they'll sell them for 200. And I'm like, that's pretty, that's pretty unheard of, but it's possible. Okay. Wow. So we've all seen this people buying storage lockers. Have you bought a storage locker? Not quite. If you guys go back on my channel last year, um, all the Goodwills in our area were just because the the illness was going around. I don't want to get this video demonetized. And uh, the Goodwills were just inundated with donations because everybody was stuck at home. And they're like, well, might as well get all of our junk and give it to Goodwill. Yeah. But then also nobody was going to Goodwill because they were staying home. So they were just had all this junk. And so they started putting it in pallets, like whole like five by five pallets of inventory sealed it up with plastic wrap and slapped a $50 price tag on there. And they're like, you can't open it. Yeah. You buy it. And I saw that and I was like, that sounds like a pretty good YouTube video. So we ended up over the course of two months, we bought 28 of these pallets, filled up two storage units. And it was, it was a lot of work, but it was a huge growth in the channel. The, the first video I did went kind of viral for us at the time. And then every video after that just kept getting more and more views. We doubled the size of the channel and subscribers in about two months from like 30,000 to 60,000. Um, and we made money. I think at, we, I had to pay somebody to move the pallets from Goodwill to the storage <laughs> units. After, after we bought the pallets and we you know, paid for the storage unit and all that stuff, I think we profited like maybe like 2,500 bucks, like a little under hundred dollars per pallet after fees and shipping and everything. But then on the YouTube side of things, we made probably like 23 videos. Um, and each of those videos probably made like 800 to $1,000 um, in ad revenue. So it, it added up pretty quickly. But I don't know if I'd do it again. If I did it again, I would definitely hire help because when you make the video going through the pallet and then the video is over, then you got to clean up all the crap because it was a lot of crap. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you say hiring help. I'm thinking I've got a, I've got a, 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 some manpower here. That's, uh, I'm an old man. Hey. <laughs> I, I'm over 50. I don't lift. <laughs> I have trouble lifting my belly, let alone boxes. I wouldn't wish this on you. I would not wish on you. Well, uh, uh, so Mikey, did you get all the viewers' questions? Well, we got all the viewers' questions. Do you have anything, like, for one, you got to tell everyone your social media. We don't, we're old, we don't have social media. He doesn't even have an Instagram. 
Oh my gosh. Oh. I've ne- actually never seen Instagram. I've never seen TikTok. Uh, I mean, you know, I'm a geezer. I, I live in, I live a cloistered life, but I do love getting stuff at flea markets. And, and uh, I mean, I love that. I got a house full of stuff and I love the joy you bring to what you do, man. You have found a, a thing in our culture that you're good at, that you enjoy doing, and you're making an honest dollar. And, uh, and it's very entertaining, man. So uh, good you. on you. And uh, it's really a pleasure getting to talk to you and meet you like this. And when I come to the East coast again, I'm definitely going to come and see if I can hook up with you and come down. Absolutely. I'd like Absolutely. I'd, I'd love to. to. We'll, just, make a, we'll make a YouTube video together. I would love that, brother. That would be great. Let us know when Absolutely. you're not home and we'll come through your house and look at what's there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> be, be sure and let us know when you're not home. Yeah. Uh, it's great, man. Take care of yourself. Happy holidays. Stay safe. And uh, thank you so much for sharing. And uh, I'm sorry that I have to look here to see you and then look up here so I can act like I'm seeing you up here. Because <laughs> we've got to have Josh end it. He's got a way of ending, but I, we've I do. I do. People end uh, it. Absolutely. So thank yeah. you guys so much for yeah, having me. Yeah. <laughs> <So, laughs> thank you guys so much. This has been an absolute blast. Um, again, happy to to meet up with you guys anytime in the future. Uh, my name is Harry Tornado on YouTube and on on, on Instagram. You can find me over there. And uh, again, just honored to be here. Uh, Thank you guys for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Is that not super cool? Like the fact that these Hollywood celebrities, maybe not A-list, but still celebrities are finding our YouTube channel, which honestly is fairly small in the grand scale of YouTube and actually enjoying our videos. Like these people that have made hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars over the course of their career are finding it interesting when we buy things for a dollar and sell it for 20 or 25. You know, I, I was just blown away at this experience. I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. Like I said, it's very different than what we normally do, but if you've made it this far, obviously you enjoyed it. So hit that like button for us, hit that subscribe button for us down below if you haven't already. Thank you guys so much for watching. You're the best and we'll catch you on the next one.